How can AI help you build apps faster? That's what I'm gonna explain in this video based on a native app that I released. The best way to learn something new is to actually use it. I decided that I have to dive deeper into AI and use those tools to get a first-hand experience of how these tools actually work and how they can be integrated in my development flow. The result? A native mobile application that generates unique bedtime stories for children based on some parameters that you can feed into it and it's using the open AI API in the background to generate these stories. But AI is not only the main force behind that app, it was actually used along every step of the development from idea to the released app in the App Store. And this is something I would call AI-driven development, basically like test-driven development, but this time we're using AI. If you're interested in learning more about web and native development and how you can use AI, check out the pro courses on galaxies.dev. We got monthly fresh content about cutting edge technology, and I promise you, you're gonna get all the nuggets from the courses in just two hours. So check it out, galaxies.dev. And of course, hit the like and subscribe button for this channel so you don't miss any upcoming video. Now, if you don't have an idea for an application, I highly recommend you just use ChatGPT to generate some ideas. I did this in the beginning. I asked for general ideas, then I drilled deeper down and tried to uncover some uh, areas where potentially there are not enough apps. And this really helped me to shape the initial idea. Um, so just give it some very specific prompts. For example, give me five specific ideas and then you can ask for more more, it can dive deeper and you're probably gonna find an idea. But maybe you already have an idea, so then you can pretty much skip this step. So my idea was an application for parents to generate stories for their children. That was the general idea that we arrived on after having some conversation with GPT. Now, what you usually need is a design for your application. This is what's usually A, very expensive or B, something that you just don't have and then your application looks boring. But not today. What we can use with AI and what I recommend is Midjourney. So you can go to midjourney.com uh, and you can get started. Now, this feels very, uh, it looks a bit like you're in the matrix and it is to some degree. By the way, there's also Playground AI, which also generates these epic stunning uh, images, but I used Midjourney. Now, Midjourney using is not that easy. There's no easy API. What you gotta do is you gotta join a specific Discord channel. So you sign up, you join the Discord channel, and then you can dive into one of these rooms where you see thousands of images are generated, and then you just start typing imagine and then you have a prompt and then you can put in like a bedtime kid story app using figma using whatever kind of colors and once you get this it might take a few seconds to generate this now little tip you can actually add this to your own uh, server so if you do have a discord server you can get the mid journey bot to appear in your own server so you don't have to get into those crowded rooms here inside the mid journey server and you can just do it in your own like I did in the Ionic Academy. So let me show you the prompts that I use. These are all images I generated and here is what I initially did for the bedtime app. Kids bedtime story app, mobile app, user interface, Figma, uh, high quality 4K, colorful, simple. And it came up with these. Now, these designs, they are probably not helpful initially because you can't really convert them to an application. However, you can then say you want to upscale something, get it in a higher quality, or you can variations of that. But eventually I arrived at something and otherwise you can just hit uh, variations to get different variations. Now, this is already pretty close to the finished screen that you've seen in my native application. So for comparison, so for comparison, here is my native application. You see, it's pretty close to what we generated with Midjourney. Now, if you're very skilled, you can probably just take this and put it into code. However, I recommend that you take one additional step in between, which is using some sort of image editing tools. I'm not very proficient with Figma, so I used a combination of free tools like Pixlr, uh, where I used to chop down these different graphics, so I can just have, for example, this one image, and then I can make the background with my own gradient in the application. Additionally, I always like to use Canva, so within Canva, uh, for example, I generated logos and uh, screenshots later. But of course, if you're very good, you should probably check out a video like this to get your apps from Midjourney to Figma. 
the process is described in very detail here. Uh, and if you want to create a full Figma design, this is probably the best way you can move forward after you have your initial mid-journey designs. If you can't come up with good prompts to generate designs, I also recommend unprompt.ai. You can upload an image, which you can also, by the way, now use within Discord. So if you use the command slash describe, you can describe uh, or upload an image and you will get a description from Midjourney how that image was probably generated with a command. But this also works on unprompt and on unprompt you can also use like app UI and then you would find images that people generated with AI around app UI and you would also see the prompts that people were using to actually generate those images. Once your design is ready and you probably got a Figma file, you can move forward and develop the application. Now I'm a developer so uh, I pretty much already knew what I wanted to do, but usually I would still start with ChatGPT to ask stuff like create a login page with these kind of input fields, use these packages, use this styling, and then it will scaffold out that page for you a lot faster than you can do. Yes, you can just align this and do this on your own, but trust me, with ChatGPT, with the help of this, you can usually bootstrap or scaffold the pages of your application a lot faster. Also, during all cycles of my development, I used ChatGPT to ask about specific problems, specific errors that came up. So I asked tons of questions and I got great replies. The whole in-app purchase feature was basically developed by ChatGPT because I had no idea how this worked with React Native, also including something like SQLite usage. All of this comes from ChatGPT and it worked awesome. But of course, AI does not only stop with ChatGPT. I also use GitHub Copilot. I signed up, I'm currently actually using the trial, but it is pretty amazing for code that probably is using frameworks or versions that are established. If you use Copilot on stuff that is very new, just came out, you're usually gonna run into some issues because it's using deprecated stuff. However, in tons of other cases, you will just get these nice code completions. It is just giving you these prompts um, because it knows what you want to do. So if you're not generating and then I want to create a view and then I want to probably generate another text field, like all of this is coming from Copilot and it's really fascinating how well this works in a lot of situations. So then I continued building my application. I've wrote the whole stuff here with React Native. Uh, as I said, I have the nice coins implementation, which came from ChatGPT. I wanted to initially just develop this application for iOS because I think people are more likely to pay for in-app purchases on iOS. And yes, I could have probably done this with Swift as well. And that is another challenge I might take one day to build a Swift application just with ChatGPT. However, I use React Native in this case. Now, once my development of the app was finished, I wanted to release that app. And if you want to release an app, you need two things. You need a great app icon and you need an app store description. And once again, I consulted with Midjourney. So in my Midjourney profile, you will likely see, yeah, the different variations of that image. It's probably not yet finished, but I'm working already on a new app icon. I also have this epic nice little cobalt, which I used on one of my screens. Um, so all of this came from Midjourney. Usually, once again, these don't work well as an icon, so I imported them to Pixla or later to Canva, and then in Canva I created the according sized icon. Additionally, I had to create the App Store screenshots, which I also used Canva for. I tried different tools in the past, and there are different paid tools you can use to generate the App Store images, but trust me, this was actually pretty easy. Yes, it's probably not perfect, but you can get a nice result with just using Canva and you can easily resize your pages to the right format that Apple uh, requires once you submit your app. Finally, for the App Store description, I consulted, of course, ChatGPT again, because writing these descriptions is really boring and not the thing I like. So try to combine what your app is about and what the general App Store description should be about in a little prompt and give it to ChatGPT. And you usually get something like this that is way better than anything that I could come up with my own in like an hour and it just takes not even a minute. You can probably refine your prompt and include stuff like this, but it is unbelievable what you get out based on just a minimal prompt. After all the development and creating the App Store entry, you just gotta hoe and hand over your application to Apple or Google, whatever platform you want to use. And as a result, you have an epic native mobile application. So here is the Bedtime Stories app again. I got this nice little 
little uh, screen with a cobalt for the in-app subscriptions. Uh, I can view my previous stories using SQLite database, I got a share plugin, and of course I got the screen to generate the stories based on some parameters. Yes, it has still uh, potential to be better, but this is all using ChatGPT, Midjourney, and tons of different AI tools. So AI might not yet be perfect, but it can save you hours and hours of time. I couldn't have developed this application as it is right now, especially with the graphics in the time that I did. So this probably took me like a weekend on and off, a few hours, so I'm dead, and I spend time with my family. I haven't been coding all weekend long. This was just in between development. And I think for that, it is a pretty nice result. So let me know what you think about the application and tell me in the comments, have you released anything with AI? including the AI APIs or just the help of AI over the last time? Drop a comment below if you got any questions about the process or also if you want to see more videos about code and AI on this channel in the future. So until next time and happy coding, Simon.